And uh, <laughs> 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 Steph and Dave sat me down the other day, <laughs> and they said, they said, you know, they're very good vitamins for that. Don't we? <laughs> we really understand why you eat so many of them. <laughs> but you know, you have to face the fact um, that uh, you may well not be here in, in 50 years' time. Usually it's the sort of realisation that comes to people when they're about five, you know, <laughs> mortality. You know, it's taking a bit longer to, to get there. Uh, and, and so we, we've started, you know, a conversation um, some, some years ago about what's called succession planning, which is how, when you have an organisation, how you ensure its continuity into the future to ensure its stability. Because the order is so precious to, to all of us, so important, it's changed so many people's lives in so many wonderful, positive ways. It's really important that we think about how we'll continue into the future. And uh, so often with, with, uh, with, with, with groups, when, when a leader dies, you have this, what's called a moment of peril, you have this kind of chaos and, you know, that ensues, and it's, it's not a good way to ensure the continuity of an organization just not to think, just to kind of pretend that we're all going to go on forever. You know? um, so in fact, we've initiated, I mean, quite a while back, actually, we initiated a whole program of looking at all the roles in, in the order and, and, you know, from you know, in the office and everything of like, you know, what happens if somebody's ill or unwell or steps in front of a bus or all the rest of it, you know, what happens and we've, you know, uh, we've got sort of protocols in place and all the rest of it. So, so um, we feel that the most responsible thing to do is, is, is to work on this. And so we have a succession plan, which is what I want to talk about uh, today with you. Um, I have chosen a new chosen chief. And that's, that's what it means. The chosen chief means that, that, that the chief chooses the next chief. And uh, I've chosen one and already begun a process of training and apprenticeship. And the plan is that that will go on for another two years until 2020. And then in 2020, we'll have a big party here. We haven't checked with the Abbey people yet um, because that takes a while for them to, to, but hopefully we'll be able to have a big one like we had in uh, 2014 uh, in the Abbey grounds. And uh, by then I will have been chief for 32 years. And I will then hand over the role, but I shall continue to be completely committed to the order, completely present, completely involved uh, in it, but I will, I will hand on the role. So, uh, you probably want to know... <laughs> uh, Do you really you want to know? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so, so I thought I would introduce you to the, uh, to the chosen chief in training, uh, and we'll t talk a little together so you can get to know them, and uh, and then we'll have a we'll, we'll have a tea break, and then an opportunity to if you have any questions or queries to to, 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 to raise them, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. So now I'd like to introduce you to uh, the person who's going to be chosen chief from 2020 onwards, mm -hmm. and that is Ima Burke. <laughs> When, when we actually asked you if, if you'd like to be, we invited you. Well, I was gobsmacked because I, I never saw it coming. It was not in my awareness. I never thought about it. Actually, I assumed that the fishermen would work. For <laughs> 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 you. So even though I know that there would be, there had to be a succession at some point, but I didn't, I, I wasn't in it. And, uh, so it just threw me completely, and then I thought I was dreaming, and then I thought I'd wake up and say, "Imagine I had a dream." Instead, he asked me this. Uh, so I was, yeah, absolutely blown away and surprised because it was not something I've ever wanted. It's not something I dreamed of. Uh, and you said you, you, and you said you wouldn't have asked for it if it had been sort of ad the vacancy had been advertised at Touchstone. You wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. And I, and I, and you know. 
what I said to you was that that's really important. Uh, when when I was asked, I had no idea either. And uh, you know, the problem with those kind of ways of choosing people, where you know the, the conventional sort of political way is where people are put up, uh, you know, they, they people vote and uh, people jockey for position and put themselves forward, and then you you will get letters inviting you to choose from different pitches of different people. And all right, so it's not a way for a, for a spiritual group, I think, in the ideal world to, to, to work. You know. um, and maybe you could, um, so I think it's lovely. I was very touched and pleased uh, that you said that, that you didn't sort of, you say, well, actually, I was expecting this. I'm glad, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you finally got around to asking me. <laughs> My initial reaction wasn't yes, and, but it wasn't no. <laughs> so I've been asked, so I, I didn't like to say no at the end. No, <laughs> so, I was asked, so I would take on the road. It's not something I wanted, but mm. things happen for a reason, so 